today. Uh, Miss Mary and Miss Deborah are not feeling well. Miss Shorty and also Miss Jim Carroll, Miss uh, Anna with the two little ones. They've got to watch over them and help them today. They got the little kid thing going on with the running noses and whatnot. Remember them? Remember the big day Miss Sheila had talked to them today? Have you talked to them? I've been talking to them in prayer, if you will. Remember Brother Jim and Miss Kim. I haven't talked to him today. I was hope they had a good service this morning. But uh, just always remember them in prayer. Uh, as far as announcements go, I understand that uh, Alden Baptist Church took up an offering last night for the building over in Scotland. And uh, I understand about $1,200. Right? So praise the Lord for that. Amen. That's a blessing. So remember that, uh, then praise, praise the Lord for that, amen. I understand Justify I got to sing a good many songs down there last night and had a good time. Got their high priest out for about three hours. And, <laughs> amen, that's good thing. <laughs> but I uh, appreciate Brother Evie and him inviting them down. And I wish I could have went, but we're in the middle of selling this week, so we not able to go. But uh, remember them. Also remember our uh, family conference coming up the uh, first week of January, January the 4th, will be the Monday night. Looking forward to that. Got several other folks that may be able to come through the course of the week. And uh, looking forward to seeing some of them. Uh, this Wednesday night, we'll be having our Thanksgiving service, or meal if you will. Won't be much as far as a service, as far as a normal service. But uh, we'll try to get started around 6 o'clock. I think everybody's signed up for what food and all that stuff. So uh, looking forward to having a good time of fellowship. Uh, we don't do that very often on Wednesday night, so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, so try to be here as best you can. I know some of y'all got to work Wednesday, so are y'all going to be off by the end or not? I won't be here Wednesday. You won't be here Wednesday. That's not right. That's not good. I know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, pray for you. It's got to work. And, uh, we're, are you off Thursday, brother? Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. Make sure you bring your flesh on. Amen. Uh, let's see. Christmas banquet's on the 18th. Uh, so remember that. That's a Friday night. Looking forward to that. Anybody else got something we need to announce or a prayer request? Yes, sir. Yes. Ms. J messaged me this morning. Come on, Catherine. Who? Ms. J. Chris. Oh. I saw that one the other day that she had to be taken back to the hospital. I don't think they're even letting them go see her at all at the hospital. They tested her again and she tested positive, so they won't let anybody go. Okay. Okay. Miss Chris, her mother. Anybody else? Pray for my friend Michelle over the call. The niece and them in Scotland that they'll get back in church. And then Miss Andrea and them up in Nova Scotia. Yep. Brother West Mills' uh, father passed away yesterday or day before. So remember them in prayer. They'll be having a funeral here in the next day or two. Uh, remember them. Parker Jane got back okay. So appreciate the work in her traveling mercies. Anybody else?
How many hours you got? I guess they have a running thought. Maybe they have a struggle. I also believe it.
Psalms 107. Psalms 107. You say, Preacher, you preach out of Psalms a lot. Well, I live there a lot. And, uh, I need them if nobody else does. <laughs> I started putting into practice reading the book of Psalms once a month with my other reading. It, it really helped my heart, and uh, it speaks to me a lot as I read through them. And uh, that's where most of my preaching messages come from, is just through Bible reading. And uh, the Lord spurs a spurs thought in my heart and mind as I'm reading through. I was reading this the other day. Uh, the Lord began to speak to my heart out of this particular psalm. Uh, I didn't get time to read The Treasure of David on this psalm or the other book that I have, but uh, I hope that we can give you some things out of this psalm. I want to preach on Thanksgiving today. Uh, Brother Howard got the, got the chore of preaching on the harp stuff or teaching on it earlier. I was thankful, amen. I got to, I get to do something good and nice for a change, amen. And, uh, but uh, I appreciate that. I, that was a good Sunday school lesson, and, and it's true. Uh, we've got to deal with our pride, and we've got to get humble for God to be able to do anything with us. And, uh, and I don't know about you, but I have to deal with my pride all the time. It don't never go away. I don't know why that is. But you can deal with it and humble yourself today and then tomorrow, guess what? It'll be right back. It'll be doing whatever it can do to try to, to mess with you. And uh, so it, it's in our flesh. And uh, it is, uh, I think one writer said, it, it's the seed of all sin. And uh, pretty much the truth, amen. And uh, so I appreciate the Sunday School lesson, but we get to teach on and preach on Thanksgiving, amen. And uh, this week is Thanksgiving week, and I'm looking forward to Wednesday night. I really honestly thought that uh, everybody would be able to be here this Wednesday night. I apologize for that, Thomas, for scheduling that on the wrong day for you. But uh, I really thought everybody would be off by then. But um, anyhow, I am looking forward to it. And I hope that you can be here Wednesday night for our Thanksgiving meal. Bible said in Psalm 107, verse number 1, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them out of their distresses. And He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For He satisfied the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God, and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore He brought down their heart with labor, they fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. All oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. 
Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saveth them out of their distresses. He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare His works with rejoicing. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in the great waters. These see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep. For He commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. You see the pattern here? And He bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. That sounds familiar in the New Testament, doesn't it? Then are they glad because they be quiet. So He bringeth them up unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness, for His wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt Him also in the congregation of the people and praise Him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation, and sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Again they are menaced and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Right. Brother Dennis, would you pray for us, brother? Lord, thank you for this opportunity for your love and your goodness to us. Lord, we should have been to praise you more than we do. You can give to us one of your wonderful words. We should be thankful for Thank you for our families. We're thankful for our church and pastor. We pray that you bless the service today. We'll give him the words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I think if you paid attention in the reading that you'd find that there was a pattern there that, that man, we would, he, he just does crazy things and then he cries out to the Lord and the Lord delivers him. And he does it over and over and over again in the psalm. And, uh, and, and I thought, well, man, how, how dumb could they be? Uh, how, how hard-hearted could they be to just again and again and again. But, but if you start looking inward and you start looking at yourself, you begin to realize that's talking about me. Yeah. That, that God blesses and God helps and then, and then for some unknown reason we, we turn and we do things we shouldn't do or, or begin to think things we shouldn't and, and act the way we shouldn't or say things we shouldn't and we find ourselves again that we have to cry out to God and ask Him to help. But can I say He's always helped? <laughs> he is a very present help in trouble. Uh, you see that word trouble again uh, in this psalm, just like we've been looking at Psalms 46. But He says in verse number 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. And then again in verse number 22, he said, And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. And, and the thought for today is, is thanksgiving. 
How we ought to be thankful for who God is and for what He does in our life. Uh, we come to this time of year every year. And, and I realize that the world is changing it to Turkey Day or to Football Day or this day or that day. And now they're even saying you can't even come together and, and celebrate a Thanksgiving because you're going to get COVID and, and you got to stay home and don't go nowhere and don't do nothing. But can I say it's right to thank God every time you have a chance. Amen. And it is nothing wrong with coming together and thanking the Lord for who He is and for what He's done. No. Sunday morning ought to be that every week. Amen. Uh, to thank God that what He has done for us. And so we notice that He's talking about thankfulness in this particular passage. We found four verses in this passage here that say the same thing. Verse number 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. And he says it again in verse 15, in verse 21, and then again in verse number 31. Yes, we ought to praise Him. We ought to thank Him for all that He does for us. Amen. But mostly for who He is. Amen. He's wonderful. Amen. Just like they sang one while ago, He's more than wonderful. Amen. Amen. He is a good God to us, and we ought to be thankful to Him. Uh, we don't want to go to Romans chapter 1 and become unthankful. We don't ever want to go down that road. We need to stay in Psalms 107 and be thankful. Amen. We need to be thankful. God has blessed us over and over and over again. And your life may not be everything you want it to be today, but just thank God it ain't everything it could have been. Amen. Uh, God, God has blessed us. Man, you get to thinking about the food we eat. Good, not a little. I don't care what they say. America eats better than anybody. And they come on the radio. Now, I, I, I may be wrong here. But they come on the radio and they talk about one in four people are starving in America. I ain't seen that. I, I, in my mind, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm conspiracy theory. They're just trying to get money. Amen. For, for their own... I don't know what they're doing. And I'm, I'm all for helping somebody that needs something to eat and we do that here. Amen? But uh, listen, I don't see one in four needing something to eat around here. Amen? We eat good. God has been good to us. God has blessed us. About everybody in here has got a good job. All you young men, God has blessed you with a good job. Amen. Uh, God, God has done a lot for us, and we ought to be thankful. Amen. I want to just give us five things this morning we all thank God for. There's a whole lot more than that. Uh, if you, you were to sit down and write out a list, uh, I believe we'd be like that song, Count Your Blessings, name, name, name them one by one. Uh, God would, uh, uh, we, we'd have to get a bigger piece of paper. Amen. Have to sharpen a pencil there. God has been good to us. And we ought to be thankful to that, for that. Amen. I want to just give you uh, five things here. Uh, number one, we ought to thank Him for His goodness. The Bible did say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. We're not talking about that He's done good. He just is good. Amen. He is good. Amen. There's never nobody any good. Amen. If you can say it that way. There's nobody better than Him. There's nobody more gracious than Him. He is good. Amen. Romans chapter number 2. And we'll look at a few verses this morning. We'll try to run. I, I, I try to put Scripture into our and our messages so that we can flip pages and read our Bible and, and, and get something from the Scripture. Romans chapter 2, verse number 4. The Bible said, uh, Or despisest thou the riches of His goodness, and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Uh, you know why you got saved? Because God in His goodness led you to repent. I worry about folks that uh, say you ain't got to repent. I worry about people like that. 
Because they haven't experienced the goodness of God. They didn't repent of them. Because the goodness of God will lead you to repentance. Yeah. You know what He did for me on February the 8th, 1987? He, he sent a preacher my way. Amen. And that man preached and he preached and he preached. And, and, and I listened and listened and listened. And God began to draw my heart and draw my heart. And, and for you know it, I'm down at the altar. He had led me to a place of repentance where I realized that I was a sinner and that I needed to be saved. Thank God His goodness did that for me. Amen. Thank, if you're saved this morning, it's because He's good. Amen. Just because He's good. Amen. I like the way Zechariah put it. Uh, we'll look there real quick. Zechariah chapter number 9. That's next to the last book in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter number 9 and verse number 17. He said, For how great is His goodness and how great is His beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine to make. He's just bragging on the Lord for how great is His goodness how great is His beauty. Uh, I believe we ought to brag on Him. Amen. Uh, every now and again, uh, we ought to just thank Him for all of His goodness and who He is and what He's done. God has been good. He is good. Jeremiah chapter number 31. Jeremiah chapter number 31. The Bible says this in verse number 14. And I will saturate the soul of the priest with fatness. Sometimes I wonder if he, we could interpret that, interpret that into preachers. Amen. I will saturate the soul of the fatness. And my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. You know what's going to satisfy you? It's His goodness. You can have a, money, a bank full of money and be not satisfied. Amen. Amen. You, you, can, you can have a lot of things and not be <clears throat> satisfied. I, I mean, you, you can work all your life for everything you want and not be satisfied. But if you just get a good taste of the goodness of God, you will be satisfied. Amen. Amen. It is a satisfying thing to know who God is. He will satisfy your soul. Amen. I like it what it said in Psalms chapter 23. Uh, you know this psalm. Psalm chapter 23 and verse number 6. The Bible said this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness. It's going to follow me. Amen. I'm saying we ought to thank you. <coughs> We read that in Jeremiah chapter number 31, talking about his goodness. He would satiate you, he'll satisfy your soul. You know what the next verse was? I meant to look at it while we were there. The next verse is a prophecy about Christ. If you want to experience the goodness of God, you need to know the Lord. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, thank you for his goodness. Amen. The psalmist in Psalms 107 said that, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Secondly, looking back at 107 in verse number 7. I want to thank him this morning for his guidance. Thank you for his goodness. I thank you for his guidance. Verse 7, and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. We ought to thank God this morning for his guidance, his leadership. Say, preacher, I know all these things. When's the last time you thanked him? <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. When's the last time you just thanked? Lord, thank you for guiding my life. 
Sometimes it's not going to go like you think it ought to go. Is it? <laughs> Sometimes it ain't going to go like you think it'll go. Man, you'll be, man, it's going to go, and all of a sudden it changes. But no, it's God that changes. God is your guide. If you're His child, He will guide you. Uh, what did He say uh, in Psalms 32? Let's look there real quick. Uh, Psalms chapter number 32 and verse number 8. The Bible says this, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. What is that talking about? That's talk he sees the way that I need to take. I can't see way out yonder. He can see. And so He guides me in the now and keeps me from the things that I don't need to be in. He guides me with His eye. The Bible says this in John chapter number 16. If you look there real quick. John chapter number 16. Verse number 13. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. For He shall not speak of Himself. But whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And He will show you things to come. He is our God. God. The Spirit of God will guide you. Psalm 23 and verse number 2. We'll look there real quickly. Psalms 23 and verse number 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. I'm saying God is our guide. And we ought to thank Him for it. For being a good guy. Amen. He's, he's a good God and He's a good guy. God will guide you if you just let Him. Amen. I, I was, my, this song came to my mind. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it. But... Uh, as I was studying this this morning, this song came to mind. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought. O oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still it is God's hand that leadeth me. Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom, by water still or troubled sea, Still kiss His hand that leadeth me. Lord, I would clasp Thy hand in mine, nor ever murmur, nor repine, content whatever lot I see, since it is my God that leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, and when by Thy grace victory is won, in death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me. He leadeth me by His own hand. He leadeth me. His faithful follower I will be. For by His hand He leadeth me. I'm just saying God's our guide. Let's let Him be the guide that He is. Amen. I don't know about you. I, I thought about going to Israel. Want to go? Would love to go. And back in the day when Brother W.J. was young and I was younger. We would go places and we would go do things in Spain and Germany and places like that. And uh, we'd go to Germany, we'd rent a car. We'd just see how lost we could get. And we'd run around the country and find this and find that and do this. Uh, and, but I thought about going to Israel. I, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I think I'm going to hire me a guy. Amen. Why? Because these folks will wear a key. <laughs> they, they, there's Muslims, there's Arabs, there's, they, they, there's some crazy folks around there, amen? Kind of like downtown areas in America, amen? Uh, you better have a guide, amen? I, I went to Houston one time, and Brother Dan Bennett said, come on, let's go! And, and I went down there with him, and, and I'm down there like, what am I doing down here, amen? And if he hadn't have been there, I would have ran, Amen? He was my guide. I'm saying God will guide you. If 
You'll just let him lead. He's a good guy. And we ought to thank him for being our guy. You know, God will take you some places you don't think you need to go. Oh. There's been a few places I didn't think I needed to be there. But it was God's hand that was leading me. There's a few places you'll go in your lifetime with God being your God. You're going to think, Lord, what am I doing here? Why am I here? I don't belong here. But it was His hand that guided you there. He's trying to show us something. He's trying to teach us. And God will guide you through some hard places. What did He say in Psalm 23? He prepares a table before His enemies. Uh, he, he, the, shed, the valley of the shadow of death. He, he leads through that. And, and, and I'm just saying that, that we can trust our God. We just need to hold His hand. And we ought to thank Him for being a good guy. Amen. We ought to thank Him because He is good. We ought to thank Him because of His guidance. We ought to thank Him because of His grace. Look at verse 13 and 14 of Psalm 107. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and He saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. Now listen, they weren't there because He had guided them into a bad place. They were there because of verse 11, because they rebelled against the words of God. Uh, they, they did things they shouldn't have done and, and by the time it's all finished they're in bonds they're in, uh, they're in distress they're, they're in all kinds of issues but when they cried out to God God in His good grace reached out and He got them out of it has He ever done that for you? He did that for me when He saved me Amen it was His grace for by grace are you saved. Through faith that not of yourselves is gift to God. Not of works lest any man should boast. It was grace that, that, that saved Noah, wasn't it? You get to thinking about it through the Bible. Uh, no, the Bible said Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Did you teach him that this morning? I saw Noah's ark. I had that rubbed down before you done it. Uh, <laughs> Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. How did Noah get on the boat? By the grace of God. How are you going to get saved? By the grace of God. Ruth got saved by grace, didn't she? She found grace out in the field. Boaz looked at her, had grace on her. John chapter 1, verse 17. The Bible said great. grace came by who? Jesus Christ. Lord, if we ain't got nothing else to thank God for, we ought to thank Him for His grace. God help us for being unthankful. The only reason you sat here this morning is because of His grace. The only reason you breathed this morning, you got up, is because of His grace. The grace of God is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Without it, we would be so lost. It's grace what saves our soul. It's grace what keeps us saved. I'm glad I'm not trying to work for it. Aren't you? Amen. I'm glad I'm not trying to not just not only work to be saved, but work to keep being saved. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I ain't got to do that. Amen. That ain't biblical. Amen. Folks are, are worrying themselves to death on, on trying to keep themselves saved. You can't do it. Amen. The grace of God can do it, though. Boy, you can rest in that grace. That's another thing in the book of Ruth. Found rest. How did she find that rest? Through grace. Boy, you can rest in the grace of God. You can, th can you imagine? I, you remember Brother Judy, he wrote that song on that old shoe. Every time she looked at that shoe, she could think 
about grace. And the rest that that grace brought her. So every now and then we all stop just saying, Lord, thanks for your grace. Lord, you've been mighty good to me. Lord, you've been better to me than I deserve. Are you thankful this morning? We ought to thank Him for His goodness. We ought to thank Him for His guidance. We ought to thank Him for His grace. We ought to thank Him for His gifts. Look down in verse number 20. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, thank God for His Word. What a gift from God. This book. You hear this preached here all the time whether it's me or somebody else. I don't know the great physical gift that God has given me. This book. This book is such a precious gift. And I, I don't know about you, but I, I would thank God for this book. This book is a wonderful book. Every now and again I get to thinking about all the people that died so that I could have this book. You realize these people shed their blood so that you and I could hold this book in our hand today. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. They gave their life so that yeah. you and I could have this book. <clears throat> Oh, we ought not to treat it so flippantly. Oh, we ought to cherish it as a great gift from God. But not only the, the, this book in particular as a gift from God, but I like what it said here in Romans chapter 10 and verse 14. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You know what God gave me one day? He gave me a preacher. I like what Brother Gary Chris said. I think he's told it from somebody else. Uh, every creature needs a preacher. I thank God he sent me a preacher. <laughs> Brother Larry Ivaker. None of y'all know him. I don't know if you ever met him. Uh, He was quite a preacher. And the preacher who preached that day, what did he do? He gave me God's word. Now, I on purpose read a lot of scriptures because I realize it takes the word of God to be born again. Mm -hmm. Amen. I try to put a lot of scriptures in my message. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if you're ever going to be thankful, I think we ought to read some verses about being thankful. Amen. Amen. Thankful. I ought to thank Him for His gift of the Word. I ought to thank Him for His gift of healing. He talked about here in verse number 20, Psalm 107. He sent His Word and He healed them. Has He ever healed you? He's healed me physically in some ways and He's healed me spiritually. I ain't sure about emotional yet, but He's working on me. God's a healer. Amen. He can heal your physical needs. Amen. Thank God that He can reach down. That's what He did the whole time He was here, seems like. He was touching this one, speaking to that one, doing this, doing that. Why? Because he was healing people. Yeah. By the way, he still heals me. Yeah. Wasn't too long ago they got a message. Please pray for Miss Vicki Richburg. She got cancer. Next time she went to the doctor, she didn't have a cancer. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't choose to heal everybody physically. Does he? That's his prerogative. Not mine. And we want him to, especially when they're close. 
We want Him to heal. And, and, and sometimes He doesn't heal the body. I got to think, and you get to think about reading through your Bible. And, and man, and this one had a miracle, and that one had a miracle. Oh, Lazarus, God came by and got him out of the grave. But have you ever noticed Lazarus is gone? He is, man. Mm -hmm. They came another day when he died that God didn't get him out of the grave. That's God's choosing. God's choosing. But he has the power to heal. He has the power to heal you physically. He has the power to heal you spiritually. And that's what the greatest need. People's spirits are broken. Oh, thank you for his healing. It talks about his deliverance here in this chapter, or in this verse. Oh, that men would, uh, excuse me, verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He gave them deliverance from destruction. If God hadn't delivered you that day you got saved, you'd have destroyed yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. I remember back when I was lost. I was, I was 19 years old. And it seemed like I was bent on destroying myself. Just bent. Couldn't get enough liquor. Couldn't get enough of sin. But God came by one day and He gave me deliverance. Mm -hmm. And He reached down and He got me out of that destruction. He reached down in that miry pit of sin and He brought me out of it. He delivered me from my own sin. I was trying my best to destroy me. Uh, we, we think so, well, man, we, we look at the dope addicts and the drunks and the, the harlots and the prostitutes and, the, and, and all them kind of folk out there and man, how bad it is. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? Because of sin! Right. And it's like it's chained them and they can't get loose! Not everybody gets to be that. Some people, they're chained by other things. And listen to me. If you go to hell, whether you go to hell living under a bridge or whether you go to hell living on a church pew, you're still in hell. Amen. Amen. You need to be delivered. Amen. Amen. You need to be delivered. Thank God for His gifts. I'll give you one more. Thank God for His gladness. Look down in verse 30. Then are they glad because they be quiet, so He brings them unto their desired haven. Gladness. I'm glad the Lord gives us some gladness. Aren't you? I'm glad I don't have to walk around mopey and miserable all the time. Amen. Now, it may seem like I do sometimes, uh, but I don't. God has been good to me. And I rise above that old murky mess in my own heart and mind. <laughs> and I have some gladness about me. That's a gift from God. I'll just read you a few verses. Psalms chapter 4 and verse number 7. I just put gladness in my heart. More than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Who put it there? God. Oh, to thank you for those times he puts gladness in my heart. You know, sometimes I, I get heavy hearted. You've been heavy hearted. Thank the whole world to me. Like brother so and so is mad at you, sister so and so is despising you. Uh, so and so. You ever get that way? Your mind just start running. And you think, sure enough, they're just as mad as me. They never gonna speak to me again. And the next time you see them, ain't nothing wrong. You've made it all up, you hate it. You ever get that way? 
Thank God every day again. He'll, he'll come along and put some gladness in your heart when you like that. And He'll get that out of your head. Amen. Thank God for His gladness. He can put it there. Psalms chapter 30 and verse number 11. Thou hast turned uh, for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Sometimes the path you take seems to take you down a really dark, dark road. Sometimes it's, uh, you don't know if you'll ever see light again. But can I say the Lord can put some gladness in you? Just think about what He's done for you. We were listening to a song on the way up today. Uh, we, we were coming to the campsite. And, uh, I really think one of y'all all the same. I don't know who. Either justified or Alison or Medine or somebody. I don't, I don't even know if this is the right name, but it's uh, when, when he sees me, he sees the land. And man, my heart got started getting cold. Because when he does see me, he sees Jesus. Well, I'm glad he don't see all my sins. He's cast him as far as the east is from the west. Amen. He can put gladness in your heart. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 30. We'll read that real quick. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse number 29. Brother Harris going to preach tonight. He's going to bring the house down. And people are going to be shouting and running out. Isaiah 30 and verse number 29. Ye shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept. And gladness of heart is when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. Uh, there's a lot of promises in here about having some gladness. One more, Acts chapter 14. And I'll be done. Acts chapter 14. Nevertheless, verse 17, He left not Himself without witness, that he did good. He gave us rain from heaven and fruitful selling seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. I'm just saying when we do sit down to eat Wednesday night, we ought to be thankful. Because it was God that gave. My understanding, if my history's correct, is the first Thanksgiving, they had this big old meal prepared, and they were just wanting to thank God for His bountiful supply of the year. We've kind of lost touch with that in our country. We're, we're kind of like Brother Howard was talking about. We, we get to expecting it. We think we deserve it. So, We've always had it. Hey, we've just always had it. We've always had a big Thanksgiving day, ever since I can remember. Maybe your your life is a little bit different. I don't know, but but I know back home Thanksgiving's a big deal. All the family comes in for Thanksgiving, and they have food here and food there and food over yonder. I skipped the devil eggs. I don't like them. <laughs> the devil's in the room. I don't know what's wrong with them. <laughs> Why would you name them that? Anyway? You ever thought of that? Why do they call them devil eggs? Why would you want to do that to an egg? I don't know. <laughs> He's filled our hearts. Food and gladness. We all be thankful. Amen. And, and I realize there's some hard things ahead in the future. But I don't know what tomorrow holds. The Lord might come back by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Biden and Ms. Harris can have it all. I don't care. Let them have it. I'll be gone. <laughs> 
I'll be saying my brother Earl Hughes. I'll be gone. Yes, I'll be gone. When the tribulation enters, I'll be gone. There will be tribulation when they get in, eh? <laughs> Listen, we got a lot to be thankful for. And I, I wish I could have preached it a lot better and made you shout and run. But if you'll just go home and be thankful for what I preached on today, I'd be ready to make it. If, if something in your heart will turn to be more thankful, I believe I've done what I could do. Let's bow for prayer. Lord, thank you for being so good to us. Thank you, Lord, for sending your precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. I pray, God, you'd help us to be more thankful. And God, I pray that we would sing the songs of Zion. In our hearts, we would praise you with everything we've got. God, help us as we sing the congregation song. God, may we sing them with everything we have. And God, I pray that you'd help us to have thankful hearts. Be thankful for everything you are, what you do. Lord, I love you this morning. Appreciate all you blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Any other words before we just speak? All right. God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 5 o'clock.